welcome to the VTV News, where we tell you like it is. My name is David Rogers. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. I am Vinny Langdon. This is our first broadcast of our own weekly report of vacuum. Yeah, this is <laughs> <laughs> this is our this is our first broad. I need to move it here. Sorry. This is our first broadcast of our own weekly report of Vacaville Television News, where we give you the news of your world, sports, entertainment, and events. Yeah, so if you've been watching CBS, NBC, MSNBC, forget about it, okay? This is where it is. True vacuum villains right here, telling you the news just like it is. Our first story is, a suicide bomber blew herself up Monday among police officers who were celebrating the release of a comrade from U.S. custody, killing at least 22 people, Iraqi officials said. Separate bombings in Iraq killed 13 other people. The suicide attack happened in Dayala, a province northeast of Baghdad where Sunni insurgents have carried out persistent attacks despite security gains elsewhere in the country. The female bomb bomber targeted the home of police commissioner who had been detained by American troops for allegedly cooperating with the Mahdi army, a Shiite militia. Wreckage from a massive crisis on Wall Street could prompt the Federal Reserve to once again cut a key interest rate this week or possibly later this year. Just a few days ago, the rate cut appeared largely off the table. Now it has emerged as a possibility as the Fed prepares to meet Tuesday against the backdrop of historical upheaval in the U.S. financial system. The Dow Jones Industrial Average plunged more than 300 points in afternoon trading. On the other side, the Atlantic major European central banks have plowed billions into markets on Monday with the hope of averting a lending freeze-up in the wake of Lemon's failure. It is an ongoing process and we have to remain extraordinarily alert, said European Bank President Jean-Claude Turcotte. Now in China, their central bank cut a key interest rate to stimulate the growth as inflation has eased. It was the first rate to cut there in almost six years. Chinese regulators have steadily raised interest rates over the past three years to contain inflation pressure. Rescuers flew into hard to reach areas of the swamped Gulf Coast Monday and uncovered a devastated landscape. Hurricane Ike had destroyed the entire subdivision and emergency crews feared they would find more victims than survivors. It was the first time anyone had gotten a look at the damaged resort, island of Bolivar Peninsula just east of the hard-hit Galveston. Homes were splintered or completely washed away in the beachfront community that is home to about 30,000 pe people in the peak summer of the se season. A massive effort was underway across Texas to get food, water, and ice to people who had no power. It would be weeks until the more than two million without power have their lights turned on again. Lines snaked for blocks down side streets at gas stations that had little gasoline to pump and thousands packed shelters looking for dry places to sleep. Snapshots of damage were emerging else everywhere. Two golfers died when a tree fell on them in Tennessee. There were six deaths in Indiana. Three died in Missouri. One person died in Arkansas and three in Ohio, including two motorcyclists killed when a tree toppled them on, at the state park. The, mo the storm claimed more than 80 lives in the Caribbean before reaching Texas. Is Desperate Housewives storylines ruined? Well, Desperate Housewives jumps five years into the future. Desperate Housewives was touted as one of the freshest dramas we'd seen in quite some time when it premiered back in 2004. But it's now four years later and creator Mark Cherry felt it needed a facelift. In May's season finale, the storyline jumped ahead five years, fast forwarding each character's life into a new uncharted territory. Now Susan Mayer is with a new man instead of Mike. And the glamorous Gabrielle Salas has gained twin girls, not to mention a, quite a few pounds. Guest stars have always been a big part of Two and a Half Men. But producers recently announced the arrival of Rena Sofer, who may bring a game changer along when she shows up in September's season premiere. Word is Sofer's character, a past love of Charlie Harper's, Charlie Sheen, has a young son who bears an uncanny resemblance to the show's star. Could young Jake have a cousin? 
Watch it as it returns Monday, September 22nd at 9 p.m. Eastern on CBS. In early spring, rumors of a major NCIS death began swirling online as fans speculated over the world. The answer? Series regular Lauren Hawley, whose character Jenny was killed in a dramatic gunfight one week before the finale. McGee, Tony, and Ziva, three longtime members of the NCIS team, took partial blame for the tragic event and were consequently relocated. Replaced by the new blood, loyal viewers are left to wonder if the show really abandoned four of its main characters. I guess we'll all find out when it returns this fall on Tuesday, September 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. Returning to Africa for the first time since Season 3 Kenya, in late June, host Jeff Probst reported serious production issues, wild animals endangering the contestants, more than 100,000 in missing food rations, a fallen crane, zero accommodations to house the crew, and shipping delays lasted over a month. We're slowing the Survivor Get Ballon game down a little bit, but the Survivors prevailed and will promptly premiere their 17th edition on September 25th. CBS has given the series an extra vote of confidence, which Prost has signed on to host. This past week, Football Madness game ESPN's Tony Kornheiser uttered an apology and no one seemed to know why. We were asked about it and no one had a definitive answer. Enter the always on the job awful announcing. After listening to a snippet of the Spanish language broadcast of the game in honor of Hispanic Heritage Month, Kornheiser said this, I took high school Spanish. Either he said he's not going to be caught or please pick up my dry cleaning tomorrow. I said something before I, which I shouldn't have said. I apologize for it. Not my first mistake, undoubtedly not my last, but a hundred percent apology. Someone must have complained, or I doubted an apology would have ever made the airwaves. But evidently, the comments must have rubbed someone the wrong way. And that's alright. Kornheiser didn't have any malicious intent there, nor did he intend to demean anyone. Now, the San Jose Sharks began rookie camp today at the Sharks Ice Arena in San Jose, with 24 players scheduled to hit the ice today. Now, before playing the Anaheim Ducks rookies at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada for Sunday's game. Go hockey. Hockey is back. All right. And here's what's happening in your own hometown. On December 6th and 7th, the public access television station that you're watching this program on is hosting a telethon. On Saturday and Sunday, December 6th and 7th, there's going to be entertainment, a live auction, special VIPs, and just some stuff to get ready for the holidays. So make sure you uh, join us for that. Now, two well-known Vacaville entertainers, Bob Green and Ron George, they're back. On September 27th, they're going to be performing at the Vacaville Performing Arts Theater here in Vacaville. So make sure you go out to that event because it is a benefit for the Willis Jepson Middle School Music Program. Got to keep that support for the Vacaville Music Program. I tell you, keep it up. It's going to be featuring Vacaville's own Miss Emily Broadhurst and the Jepson Jammin' Jaguar Jazz Band. Make sure you go check that out. And uh, there's the annual Art, Wine, and Brew Festival on October 4th, uh, 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. in downtown Vacaville. I love dancing. And if you love dancing, then you should go out and join everyone at the 100th anniversary celebration at the Saturday Club. That's right, where you can dance at 125 West Kendall Street in Vacaville. It's been organized by the Saturday Club of Vacaville. And you can go there 6.30 p.m. to 11 p.m. to go get your groove on on October 25th. For more information, go check out the SaturdayClub.org. You can find out more information about that. Lots of things are going on here in Vacaville, and guess what? I'm alive to see it all, contrary to popular belief. Uh, we're almost out of time, and so we'll see you again in the future. And I'm Vinny Langdon. Good night, Vacaville. <laughs>